Hey, good afternoon, uh, or I guess good noon, since it's now just 12 o'clock. Uh, thank you all for, for being here for the 12 o'clock Baylor virtual premiere session. My name is David Humphrey. Uh, I am an admissions counselor for Baylor undergraduate admissions, actually covering the Houston South Territory uh, for Baylor. I'm excited to be here with uh, our excellent medical humanities panel today. Uh, today, we're joined by Dr. Lauren Barron, as well as Jada Rosa and Mallory Hatchell, who are students in medical humanities. They're all happy to be able to share with you uh, information about the, the great opportunities uh, available through this department. So I'll go ahead and hand it over to Dr. Barron now. Uh, we will have some time at the end for some questions and, and answers. So if you do have questions you think of, you can send those in through the chat or through the Q&A function uh, as we go along in the presentation. And we'll be happy to, to answer those for you towards the end of, of the, our time together. But I'll hand it over to Dr. Barron. Thank you, David. Uh, I'm very proud to be here and represent the medical humanities program at Baylor that I love so much. I'm a Baylor alum myself. I came to Baylor from North Houston. If any of you are from Houston, then you know that I was raised on Interstate 45 in the middle of traffic. And I came to Baylor University and uh, there wasn't a medical humanities program. I studied psychology and then went to UT, what's now McGovern in Houston Medical School, came back here to train uh, for my family med medicine uh, residency at one of the best family medicine residence residency programs in the entire country. And I'm really happy to be able to give students opportunities there that I didn't have when I was a student. So we'll talk about that shortly. Um, let me just get into the meat of what is medical humanities all about. Um, I love this sign. I love this image of a bridge. This is a bridge over the Brazos. Our river is actually called the Brazos de Dios, the arms of God. We just call it the Brazos. And the, uh, this is our students on a bridge. And I love this because I think of medical humanities as a bridge between the art and science of medicine. Now, this is our mission. We are helping to prepare tomorrow's capable and compassionate healthcare leaders for our world, all right? And when I say healthcare or when, when we use the word medicine, I wanna make sure you know that I mean that as a big tent. I'm not just talking about medical school. I'm talking about anything that happens in a medical center. And I'm talking about um, whoever is gonna work in or around healthcare. So that includes social work, it includes healthcare policy and government work, nonprofit work. It includes uh, healthcare administration. So this is that we, we want to create Christian, we're a Christian environment helping to um, create compassionate healthcare professionals. So when you study medical humanities, you study these four areas, okay? It's a field, it's not a discipline. It's a field that includes philosophy, literature and the arts, history and uh, religion and spirituality. So these are featured highly in our major. Uh, what you see here on the right is the most recent publication from the American Association of Medical Colleges. These are the people who write the MCAT. And I'm so excited about this document that's come out that talks about the fundamental role of the arts and humanities in medical education. And it's about time, all right? So I'm very excited about that. And I want you to see that this whole humanities business is legit, okay? That's what I want you to know. Um, that I'm not just, um, I'm not just telling you this, I am telling it to you, but I'm not just telling it to you. And I want you to make sure you know it's not a hoax. And I also want to make sure that you know that if you're interested in becoming a healthcare professional, don't let anybody tell you that you have to study biology or you have to major in biochemistry. I want to emphasize as much as I'd like to have you in the medical humanities program, I would like to emphasize that you should study what you love. You love biochemistry, you should major in biochemistry. If you love playing the cello and that's what you want to study, do it. You can do your prereqs for whatever healthcare professions you're going into additional to that. But I want you to see that the humanities, we're, they're recognizing that this is a fundamental role. Okay. All right, we'll go on. Now, this is my quick elevator speech. If somebody asks what it is, like on the street, somewhere that I have to be quick. I say it's a bridge between the arts and the sciences. It's the best of a liberal arts education with a medical focus. And we're helping students become human beings before their medical training turns them into gods, robots, jerks, or some combination of the three. And I apologize to Mallory and Jada because they've heard me say that a thousand times. But I think that gets the message across to your parents or your grandparents, helps you understand 
what we're doing with medical communities. It's, it's hard to understand. So I'm gonna just, I'm not gonna read all these because you can all read, um, but I'm just gonna, I wanted to just give you a snapshot of the kinds of uh, courses that we have. And Mallory, uh, after what you said, I'm gonna put on here your disability and society course because that is another really, really crucial course. Um, all of these are just, they're just fantastic. I don't know what to say, they're fantastic. This is the way I wish I had been educated before I went to medical school. I get to teach to my 20 year old self and help these students have opportunities that I didn't have. This is what I needed to be armed with when I went to medical school. And Baylor University is one of the first universities to be doing this. So um, these are the three core courses that you would take as a medical humanities major. You would take Introduction to Medical Humanities, which is a survey of those four areas. You would take Introduction to Medical Ethics, crucial. I never had an ethics course before I went to medical school. And then they try to cram it in in medical school and it, it just doesn't work well. Um, and also we are wanting to reclaim the Christian voice in healthcare. There's a reason why the hospitals around you in your town are called, you know, St. Joseph or Presbyterian or Methodist or St. Luke's, uh, Hillcrest Baptist Medical Center, Providence in our community. And that's because Christians were the ones who came up with hospitals. Okay, so these are Christian, they are intrinsically Christian institutions. Now, you've seen all the mergers and all the all the buyouts and all, all of that that's happening in healthcare, but that doesn't change the fact that hospitals were originally Christian institutions. And at Baylor, we wanna reclaim the Christian voice in, in, uh, in education in general, but particularly in medical education. So if you come to study with us, you're gonna take those three core courses that I showed you, and then you have room for two electives, and then you're gonna choose one course from a, cap, from a list, like a menu of, of classes in each of these areas. So these four were the main ones I talked to you about, okay? Those are traditionally the humanities. Some mm, strict academicians do not consider things like psychology and sociology and anthropology, um, you know, developmental behavior, don't consider those the traditional humanities. My argument is if it helps you understand human beings and human behavior, then um, it's important for you to learn. So these are the six areas that you'll be studying from. And this picture was taken right outside my office, which is right there over, is that your left shoulder, Jada? Right over Jada's shoulder in the beautiful Baylor Science Building where I get to go to work every day. It's stunning. So, but what can you do with a degree in medical humanities? Well. Um, I wanna make sure that you know that we have students going into all of these different areas, all right? They're, they're getting ready for dental school. They're getting ready for law school. They're getting ready to, um, uh, to study healthcare policy at a more advanced level, or, and they're interested in politics and, and government, or they're interested in healthcare administration. We have several, we have two students right now that graduated from, uh, with a medical humanities major that are now in the uh, Masters of Healthcare Administration over at the business school. So it's a great background for anybody who's gonna work in or around healthcare. Even if you're not at the bedside wearing a white coat, that doesn't mean that this isn't a fantastic um, background for you to build the rest of your training on. So I uh, already mentioned about the AAMC and their recent report that was 2020 on the significance of the humanities and arts. I want you to know this number um, that, and we need to update this study, but 54%, over half, this is the bottom line is, over half of the students who went into Texas medical schools majored in something other than the basic sciences, okay? And I can also tell you that there's a document that talks about the scientific foundations for the physicians of the future that this organization published. And they talk about the, the fact that the university years should not, that the, the prerequisite should not be so onerous that they don't allow time for a robust education in the humanities and social sciences. And I bet you didn't get that memo because people still think, they still come to, um, to Baylor thinking they have to just think about the sciences and that is not correct. And I'm so glad that Jada and Mallory are here on a Saturday afternoon when they could be doing 
so many other things. Um, they're kind enough to share their time and I'm gonna call on them in just a minute and they're gonna be helping me with questions that you're putting in the chat. Um, okay, what I want you to see here is that there has been massive growth in medical humanities. Some people call it health humanities at different institutions, but what I want you to see here is this curve. And Baylor was one of the very, very first to offer, it started out as a program, then they started offering a minor. They offered a major in 2007 for the first time. There were seven graduates in 2007. And now we have well over 200 students, closer to 250 students. Um, so yeah, Jada, as you're answering, answering Carolyn Mumford, we have about 250 students. They're, they're not all majors. They're not all majors, some are minors. Um, so, and also in this pie chart, you can see that um, some programs offer a minor only, some don't offer a minor, it's a certificate or it's a concentration. At Baylor, we offer the major and the minor, and we also offer it as a concentration if you're a university scholar. So let me say something here about um, science and the humanities, okay? Science is about sameness. Science is very important. Do not, please do not walk away from this webinar and tell people Dr. Barron said science was not important. It goes without saying, it is absolutely fundamental. You have to do well in the sciences. But science is good for what science is good for. It doesn't mean it's good for everything. So science is about sameness. It's about things that we can uh, replicate. It's about universal rules. It's about generalizable concepts. It's about the biophysical understanding of disease. It focuses on facts. The humanities, I should have to say humanities instead of art and literature, is more about subjectivity, about stories. It's about what's unique about human beings, what's idiosyncratic, what's particular, what's specific. And when we study the humanities, it's a different way of knowing. Multiple perspectives can exist at the same time. Um, it's not a single best answer which is what most students wanna do, a multiple choice test. Life is not a multiple choice test. And the humanities can help us with the biopsychosocial, much more rounded understanding of the experience of human beings who are ill, not just to focus on the disease. And this is one of my very favorite examples from Dr. Eric Cassell, C-A-S-S-E-L-L. -L. Look him up, email him. He's 90 years old in New York. He's in good health. Read everything he's written. But this is one of my favorite things um, about explaining, okay, wait, what are you saying about science? I don't understand what you're saying. Think about a rose and think about if you were only given a ruler and the ruler, you had to describe this rose just in terms of what a ruler can do. Then the, the picture of a rose that's gonna emerge, well, it's not gonna be a picture, it's gonna be true you know, the, the, whatever you describe in inches is gonna be true. You can measure the leaves, the stem, the petals. It's gonna be true, but it's not gonna be the whole picture, is it? It's gonna be incomplete. It's going to be a, sh a shadow of a fragment of the, the of, a, of a sliver of the, um, the essence of a rose. And if the ruler was the only thing you had to measure it, you wouldn't even know what you were missing. So all that to say that this is what the humanities do. It helps give us a fuller, rounder. It's a different way of knowing, okay? Different way of knowing. Okay, don't, don't look at the slide, okay? The point is, I'm, not, I'm saying don't read it. The point is on this, what you're seeing right here, this is the medical mode, okay? When I'm in medical school and residency, I uh, talk about migraine in terms of neural activation and trigeminal nerve irritability and serotonin agonists and the triptans and uh, the mechanism of action and the pathophysiology of migraine. Um, but, and that is, that is a way of knowing about migraine and it's very important. But when I pair that description about migraine to the image I've just shown you on the right, when I use these to complement each other, um, it's a completely different way of understanding what migraine is about. And my contention is that this is what we should be doing. We should be laying the humanities and the sciences beside each other 
so that they can inform each other and shape your understanding. This helps you understand the, the uh, scientific mechanism of migraine. This helps you understand what the experience of the person who has the migraine is having. So let me switch gears and talk about some of the partnerships we have. Um, we're very proud that the DeBakey Foundation, uh, some of you, if you're here with your, uh, some of you will know the DeBakey name if you're from Houston or you're from Texas. He was one of the most famous, he's, he's still one of the most famous uh, surgeons in the entire world. He helped develop open heart surgery. Uh, so he's indirectly probably saved the lives of a lot of your friends and family. And uh, this is his partner, Dr. George Noon, right here. Um, and this is a, a big check that the DeBakey Foundation gave to our program that funds scholarships for students. So we're able to offer um, several uh, $10,000 scholarships to students who are in their junior year usually. Um, we also, I don't have time to get into this because it's too complicated, but you can Google Waco Family Medicine. They have a new website. And this is where I trained as a doctor and I did not know about this place. It's 50 years old. It's the first family medicine residency program uh, west of the Mississippi and the first one in Texas. And I did not know about it when I was at Baylor. And that cannot happen to another Baylor student because I want to connect Baylor students to this amazing place that serves 60,000 of the poorest people in this county. So you can see what the best of primary care needs to look like. It gives you incredible opportunities as a volunteer, which morphs into shadowing, which can morph into uh, serving as research assistants. There's all kinds of things. If you walk through this door um, during your sophomore year, usually, I want freshmen to, to focus on academics. Uh, we can help hook you up with Waco Family Medicine. And like I said last time, I would have given a kidney and a cornea to, be, to, to empty the garbage at this place when I was a medical student. And that we have students volunteering there. I'm supposed to be proudest of my publications or my presentations, things like that. But one of the things I'm proudest of is that there are about 250 students volunteering at Waco Family Medicine right now. And that just is a thrill. Um, I already mentioned the DeBakey Scholarship. Um, you could read more about that on our website. And speaking of DeBakey, I have to thank the foundation uh, and George Noon, Dr. Noon, who's the head of the foundation. And Dr. Noon actually did surgery on Dr. DeBakey at the end of his life, saved his life. And read about that story in the New York Times, it's fascinating. But the DeBakey Foundation has given us a $2 million gift that has endowed uh, my professorship. And so I have the privilege of being the inaugural DeBakey Chair for Medical Humanities. We think it may be the first endowed chair in medical humanities in the country. Um, these, this is an example of some of the scholarship that our faculty are doing. Um, and I just want to show you how, and I'm going to stop here in just a second. I want to just show you how the the competencies and the things that the, um, that the medical schools are saying, we want this in our applicants to medical school, okay? And I want you to see how much these match some of the, um, the traditional Christian virtues that, you, that your parents wanted to teach you growing up. Um, and I want you to see how aligned um, the Christian faith is with what the AAMC calls competencies or values. And so this is another sort of explanation of why I think reclaiming the Christian voice in healthcare is important. We have many, this is pre-COVID and it will be post-COVID. We love to have gatherings, okay? We love it. All right, this was right before, this was right before 2020. These were all of the things that were going on. We have a retreat that focuses on the spiritual vocation of medicine in the springs. You can follow us on social media, on Instagram. And I know Facebook's not cool, but your parents will look at it. And uh, so Instagram, and then I wanna close with this quote that medicine is closer to love than it is to science uh, by Dr. Rachel Naomi Remen. And she's one of my heroes as a writer and a physician who has this orientation and I actually shared this name, Dr. Rachel Naomi Remen, with Jada when Jada was here as a prospective student. And, um, and so this seems like a good time to turn it over to Jada and Mallory to say a few words, and then we will get to answering your questions. 
So my name is Jada and I am a senior medical humanities pre-med major. And in these past four years of being an MH major, I have just really learned about the rich history of medicine and the exciting frontiers that were going on. Um, when I came in, I was really focused on like, I have to learn the biology, I have to learn the chemistry. And I thought that medicine, which is healing diseases. And then I came into Dr. Barron's classes and oh my goodness, Dr. Witt's classes, all these incredible professors. And they showed me that medicine is about healing and it's not just about disease. It's about, you know, how do we interpret it emotionally? How do we interpret spiritually? And so I can see how my idea of medicine has shifted and my role as a healthcare provider has shifted. Um, I get to heal the whole person. And it's more about the entirety of care rather than just fixing one problem. Um, hi, I'm Mallory. I am also a senior and medical humanities is my minor instead of my major. Um, I have really loved the courses that I got to take in medical humanities because it's a chance to think about some big picture questions. Um, like right now I'm taking a disability and society course and we're talking about what does it mean to be human and what kinds of things about us, um, you know, make us valuable and make us worth good care. Um, and what does it look like to be a good friend and advocate to people with disabilities? Um, so just a chance to like have good readings and good conversations about those big picture questions. That's my favorite thing about medical humanities. There we go. Thank you, Mallory. Um, it's hard for me to believe that these young women are going to be graduating in um, next month. And I'm going to miss them very much. Trying to get to some of your questions here. Does medical humanities offer research? Yes, we can help hook you up with research opportunities. Now, I'm a clinician. I'm a family doctor. I um, Baylor has me Monday through Thursday. And on Fridays, I see patients for Waco Family Medicine. But there are research opportunities. Um, research in the humanities looks different from research in the sciences. But yes, we are able to, we have connections that we can help hook you up. Uh, I mentioned already to Carolyn about 40. We have about 40 to 50 students graduating with a major every year. Um, I wrote some things about the visual arts and healing class, um, undecided on biology and medical humanities. Well, um, so the good, the, the good news is what I would do is I would look at the course catalog and I would look at the course catalog about um, biology and medical humanities and which everyone makes your heart sing. Now, just know that even if you decide to study biology, that doesn't mean you wouldn't be welcome to take some medical humanities classes, okay? So don't think that you have to major or minor. You could come take some classes with us. Um, the good news is you don't have to figure that out right away, all right? So, um, so look at the course catalog. That's what I'd say. Look at the degree plan for each of those. Um, double majoring on a pre-med path. So let me talk about this. Um, it is possible, especially with the recent uh, change in the core curriculum, um, there's more room to have for um, the, the classes that you want to take and the prerequisites. So think of it this way, and David Humphrey is going to come on in about a minute and tell us we're almost out of time. But think of everything, think of it as three buckets. You've got your general degree bucket, you've got your major, your bucket for your major, and you've got your bucket for your pre-health track, whatever it is. And some of those, some of your classes you take are going to help fill up every bucket. You get to put them in all three buckets. Some classes, like you might need for your prereqs, aren't going to fit in your major and they aren't going to fit in your general degree plan. But many of the courses overlap. So try to think about it with those three buckets. And uh, Emily, I feel like we could, we can, we can work with you on that. Um, you scholar with medical, um, yes, um, almost all. Okay. So there are some things, uh, there are going to be a few changes. We're going to start um, asking uh, you scholars to take those three core courses. And um, what we what we have to do in our program, because um, you know, there's only there's there's only so much space, especially with COVID in rooms and things like that, is we do we we love having university scholars, 
but we often, uh, there are classes that we have to offer our majors and minors um, some uh, preference to so they can fulfill their degrees. And so it's not that it's not that they aren't welcome, it's just that we, there are, there are a few areas in which we have to give the majors and minors precedence. Um, so I'll stop there um, and say that you are welcome to email us and um, we're not hard to find, just type in Baylor University Medical Humanities and we're gonna be the first one on your list, okay? Um, because, because that's how we roll. And um, so I will close there and thank you for your, your time and your attention and your interest. And I, I hope that this helps you understand more about medical humanities. You can check out our website and we wanna thank you very much for being with us today. Yes, and thank you, Dr. Barron and uh, Jada and Mallory uh, for helping us out with this session and getting to share about the, the awesome uh, just opportunities that are available through this program. Um, for our attendees, thank you for being here as well. Um, I believe the only 1230 session is a campus Zoom tour, so feel free to jump onto that if that's something you'd be interested in uh, and keep an eye out for uh, all the other uh, sessions that will be available throughout the remainder of the afternoon. Um, but thanks again to Dr. Barron and our excellent student panelists. Y'all have a good rest of your day.